This is a Pele Media Podcast. Welcome back to Goonies Minute, everybody. Goonies Minute is the fan podcast where we carefully explore the movie Goonies minute by minute. I am Brady. And this is Chris. And we're here to bring you Goonies Minute number 72. Chris, how you doing? Well, it's I'm still having a hard time getting over this past weekend. Yep. Yeah, it was uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend. It's a lot to condense into one day. One day. And no doubt. Always try and remember where you parked your car. <laughs> or you end up walking for two hours to find my car. Really? Yeah. Should have uh, had that's, Data's compass to help you find it. That's true. Uh, let's get into the minute. Let's get into the minute. In the previous minute, Chunk was able to call the Astoria Sheriff and try to help find the rest of the Goonies. The Sheriff didn't bother hearing Chunk out and accused him of telling another one of his tall tales. At 72 minutes, Chunk insists that he's telling the truth. As the Sheriff went down a list of all of the stories Chunk has told him, Chunk follows Sloth across the room to tell him not to go down the fireplace tunnel. As he moves across the room, the cord pulls out of the phone. As the phone becomes disconnected and goes silent, the sheriff asks if Chunk is still there. He now shows signs of concern. We cut back to the Fratelli's hideout. Sloth is halfway down the tunnel. Chunk has run out of options and grabs a lantern and begins to follow him. We cut back to the Goonies in a new cave. Mikey asks if anyone has to go to the bathroom, and everyone says yes. And thus ends Minute 72 of the Goonies. So it seems like Sloth... Knows how to read, or at least the important things, like ice cream labels, because um, he's saying Rocky Road repeatedly. Now, he, this I'm kind of jumping ahead here a little bit, I think, but he's walking out of the freezer with what I thought could only be uh, loaves of French bread or, like, sausage links or something. It's, it, 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 let me tell you this. It's the biggest sausage links I've ever seen. Yeah. So, I mean, I have absolutely no – was it firewood? Because he's going to the fireplace. Maybe he saw firewood. Well, that'd be interesting to, to, to have firewood in the freezer, though. Well. And that's where he comes from. That's true. Unless there was a stop in between, which I guess there could have been. There could have been. But um, to me, what's more interesting <laughs> is, Something the, more interesting is than the, that? the continual conversation of Chunk with the sheriff. Yeah, that's right. And, and I guess it looks like you know Chunk would call the sheriff and just cry wolf about different things he mentions 50 iranian terrorists that took over a sizzler and sizzler then steakhouse yeah sizzler yeah. steakhouse which used to be uh, it might still be around but i know there was a chain they used to have one here many many years ago by the uh cortana mall oh yeah <laughs> everything that is great was out by that cortana, cortana mall. mall that we've talked about man the old mall the old mall so That's... Uh, we get a reference to Go- uh, we, we get a reference to Goonies and the Goonies, don't we, Brady? We get a reference to Gremlins, the movie Gremlins here in the Goonies. Uh, the sheriff says, you know, is this one of your tall tales? Like the creatures that whenever you pour water on them, they multiply. When did Gremlins come out? Gremlins would have been, I think, 1984. Okay. For about a year before this. Okay. Uh, of course, it was a Steven like, Spielberg production. Right. So. Right. Which is a good movie. A really. Yeah. Really good movie. This movie has. So, okay, Spielberg gets his own little nod to himself, and then Richard Donner does later with the Superman gag, whenever Sloth opens up his shirt, and you get one of the most dated jokes I've ever seen in a movie. Uh, Pretty cool nonetheless, though. But does this mean that Gremlins and Goonies are in the same universe? Well, maybe they are. Maybe they are, and Chunk was, that. maybe that was one of the times that Chunk was telling the truth. Huh. Now, then, you know what's funny? Is I actually did not catch that part. Yeah. I didn't you think about know. that. What is something? And, and the whole thing with Gremlins actually being a reality, that's interesting. Because I didn't even think about yeah. it like this. I just think about it as a tall tale, but that that is a way that you could look at it. You know, and what's funny is I was thinking, like, what are some other movies that kind of stem from something? There's like a, a spinoff when they don't really need to be a spinoff. Did you know that Family Matters, the show, mm-hmm. was a spinoff of Perfect Strangers? I did not know that. The connection is that the mom on Family Matters was the elevator operator on Perfect Strangers in their building. I didn't know that, but that's very cool because yeah. I love awesome? Perfect Strangers. Perfect Strangers was so good. Belki Bartakumus. Yep. The what was, I'm trying to think. Um, what was the theme song? Rise and shine. Was that it? On the wings. Of... I think so. I think oh, it was Rise and Shine. I think yeah. it was Rise and Shine. 
you know, because Belki was uh, an immigrant that had come in. Mm -hmm. And so it was Belki Bartokamus. And then what was... What was the dude's name? The, what was the... And it, it, was it Larry or James or... Uh, <laughs> it was something like he had curly hair. And yeah, he, was, he had curly hair. He and wasn't the most attractive dude in the world. I think he was the villain in Follow That Bird, the Sesame uh, Street movie. I don't know that oh, one. come on. Um, Where have you been? Man, Chica I just remember <laughs> Chicago. They have a reference to the Cubs, and I was a big Cubs fan, so I remember that. I think it's a they good show. put up his name on the Wrigley Field sign or something. But anyway, back to the minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. Look, the, look. The sh I was looking at... We like to look at different sets and things, like uh, the sheriff's desk. Mm -hmm. I was looking at some of the things on his desk. And you notice that green light? Did you have one yeah. of those green lights? I did. I did. That's the classic um, Just like 80s desk. library desk yeah, or yeah. home desk. Like I, I still have one of those somewhere. Yeah. And then the other thing, he's playing around with a uh, like a heavy duty bait cast and fishing reel for mm -hmm. some reason. He's and got you a couple of them. Just spotted that, right? I mean, I know a fishing. Well, I didn't. Rod I didn't know for sure. Is... Once I realized that was a reel, then mm -hmm. I knew that was a bait casting reel. What's the difference? It's just uh, there's a spinning reel. You have a bait casting, and then you have like a closed face reel. Okay. And I don't know. Okay. A bunch of different ways it's going to get bait. Do... Bait cast. Uh, a lot of people use that uh, to like set something, like set it bait to just sit, and then it uh, official strike it. Whereas spin cash, you can do anything with, and then the closed face is like your old Zebcos that you get when you're four years old. Yeah, I don't know. There's a bunch of different things to explain with that. I don't like bait casters because I'm not. It, it, you usually have to be a little bit more skilled mm -hmm. to use that, and that's why I don't have it because I'm not very skilled. <laughs> They I use a spin cast. Serve the same purpose. They bring a fish so, to you. But anyway, they're heavy duty. Uh, Sue. But anyway, I just that's what was on his desk. So I was just mentioning what was on his desk because I always think think it's interesting to see, you know, to date a movie and date what's going on and see if you can figure out what else is going on based on what's on right. in somebody's desk or in a scene. Like we did it with Mikey's room and the different things in uh, Mikey's house. We were doing that, but um. Then we get back to uh, focusing on, on Chunk, who, like I said, was trying to explain to the sheriff that he wasn't lying this time. And he's following uh, Sloth over to the fireplace, and then that's when he gets disconnected from the phone. He rips the phone cord out. But I thought it was interesting how Sloth went directly to that fireplace. Yeah. And amazingly, he fits down that fireplace so easily. Remember, I was so concerned about this earlier in the mm -hmm. movie yeah. where Data was having trouble with his uh, backpack. backpack, and yet Sloth just goes down there so easily. Of course, Chunk intelligently gives him the lantern. Yeah, <laughs> good move. So, uh, you know, the minute ends with Mikey bringing up the issue of, you know, hey, got to go to the bathroom. Who's who's down? Uh, I think it's funny that the movie actually addresses that, which is an obvious thing. You think at some point when they're down in these caves, they're not going to have that opportunity very often. So Not going to have that opportunity to what? Go to the bathroom. Trust me, they can turn and pee anytime they want. <laughs> okay. You think if their life's in danger, uh, I mean, I know what you're saying, but think about it. When you're that age, you know, it is probably a bigger deal. Like now, I wouldn't care. I say, I'm sorry, I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> right. I'll you know, I'll just start away. <laughs> you might be the guy to say, like, listen, I don't have to go because I was in that uh, pool of water in the fountain earlier, and y'all were standing right next to yes. me. So. Sorry, everybody. Yes, indeed. But um, you done got got. Okay. Just a thought. I'm not sure if this means anything, but think about two other situations with Mikey in this movie. Mm-hmm. The first time he mentioned going to the bathroom, he was in the lighthouse, right? Uh, the restaurant. But his real purpose, he really didn't have to go to the bathroom. He went because he wanted to explore, mm -hmm. okay? Then he mentioned something about, was it a light up ahead or something with to go forward when yeah. they were by the pipes? Right. When the real idea is because he knew he needed to get them to go further, mm -hmm. he didn't just blindly say, "We need, I need to go pee." It's like he was yeah, thinking for a little there's bit. There's a look on his face. Yeah, I think it's his way of getting people to go further. Possibly, I never thought it until 
I noticed the other two things, and I'm thinking here, and it wasn't. It was in the fact that they that he's looking at the made it a too. point. They made it a point to draw so much attention to this pee break. Yeah, and the fact that he was focused. They focused on his face, and there was a pause. I think this is the theme of him trying to get them to go further. Mm-hmm. Although you could say at this point they're already in it. They're already anyway. In it, yeah. But I mean. I don't. He might have seen something on the map because remember this is going to lead right. to further on. So, hmm, very interesting, very interesting. Yeah, because they're all convinced at this point. You know what I think is interesting is Troy's line when he found the sweater and he said, "Andy, you goonie." Um, it's it's. I've been thinking about that since we did that minute a few days ago, and I think that's him. That's the movie almost saying, like, it's official. They are all on board. They are all now officially Goonies. And even if they had the opportunity to go up a well and get out to safety, they're not going to take it because they're all on board with Mikey now to get the right. treasure to right. no, safety. And I day. agree with that 100%. And I think that's, that's an interesting line that, that Troy has. He screams out the word Goonie. Like, it's, you know, Andy, <laughs> you Goonie. But it, I, think, I think maybe he saw something on the map. Yeah. It, it's, and it's maybe a, he didn't think that they would all follow him. And that would be the only way they would all follow him. So, that said, that is all I have. That is all I have, too. All right, right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll see you back here tomorrow for minute number 73. And until then, this is Brady. And this is Chris. And we're here to remind you that Goonies never never say say die. You've been listening to a Pele Media Podcast. For premium content and exclusive podcasts, visit us at patreon.com slash Pele Media. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Pele Media, and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash Pele Media. 